This is an EMF Audio Ghost 10 prototype. Uh, there aren't going to be too many changes between this and the production. Uh, performance wise, everything you're going to see uh, will not be affected by any of these changes. In this video, I'm going to do two different tests. Uh, one is going to be in a sealed enclosure. This one is 0.5 or 0.6. Uh, I will measure that out and make sure I put that up on the screen uh, so you know exactly the volume of that. Uh, one thing that I did kind of mess up on is this is a prefab box. I'm going to do all my testing in prefab boxes. This one, mounting depth is not quite enough. Uh, that was my mistake. I should have checked that. I thought it was going to fit off of a guess. Didn't measure it. Wouldn't fit. So in this style uh, truck box, make sure that you're checking mounting depth uh, because it may not quite fit. So we're going to be doing a sealed test and a ported test. Again, both with prefab boxes because a lot of customers in this price range of sub are just going to buy a prefab box. So that's what I'm going to show you the results in. Now I'm sure you're wondering what this microphone is, or maybe you already know. We're going to do an RTA in this big open room, and I know what all of the experts are going to say. It's not an anechoic chamber. It's against this wall. It's 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 every everything is wrong about this test according to them. But also remember that this is not in a car, and that's where you're going to listen to it. But people did want to see some frequency response, so we are going to do an RTA in this room in a sealed and ported box. So this one first, I'm going to direct the camera over to the screen where you can see the RTA that's happening here. Something to note here, I'm not going to absolute maximum excursion. I'm going somewhere in the middle on it uh, just because more volume doesn't necessarily make it respond any better, but way too low of uh, power may not be exactly accurate uh, in terms of the low end. So we've got it somewhere in the middle, probably where you're going to be playing it. So again, this is the sealed box and I'm going to start from 20 Hertz and take it all the way up to around hundred Hertz. It's going to start falling off because I've got the crossover set uh, on the sub output of this radio so after 80 hertz it's going to start falling off anyway and you're probably not playing that high regardless so we're going to give this a go starting nice and low And there you can see we've got a pretty flat response from all the way up top all the way down to 40 hertz and then it starts to fall off a little gradually there's 30 hertz at about 6 db down and then uh so we're down to 95 db at 20 hertz so uh 10 db per octave is uh basically kind of the slope we've got there and this is not in car where we should see a gain right here anyway this is again on a bench so this should get pretty flattened out in a car which will be our next video uh, with the sub the same boxes but in a car uh, so now we've got this on our baseline for our sealed we're going to go to ported uh, now we're looking right around the 105 107 db area uh, on this one as a peak number you want to compare SPL uh, to the ported box so I'll swap the sub out into a ported enclosure and we'll do the same thing over again now for the ported enclosure now this enclosure is 0.98 cubic feet before sub displacement and the sub displacement is only going to be around 0.1 so it's not a whole lot so really in about 0.9 is the neighborhood of uh, the volume here it is tuned to 
37 hertz according to the manufacturer. I have not verified that, but most of your prefab boxes are going to be tuned around 35, 37, some of them are even 40. Uh, is that ideal for all listening? No, but prefab boxes is what people typically buy for something this cost. So that's what we've got. Uh, yes, I realize that the microphone is closer to the sub than it was on the sealed box, and we're not doing an exact comparison. Because again, this is in a room, not a car. When we do it in the car, we'll have uh, the same positioning on everything. So let's give this one a go. Um, it should fall off below 37 hertz uh, to some degree, but we'll see uh, exactly what it does. For perspective, this is the same volume level, nothing has changed on the head unit. And there you go. Uh, it actually didn't fall off that far. Uh, we're talking about 103 compared to 107. Uh, so yes, this is probably going to pick up a lot of, of the uh, mechanical noise more than the frequency response uh, in terms of what you're seeing here, uh, because that's what I could actually hear was the mechanical noise. So that's what a bunch of that is. Then you see it picks up and it's pretty flat response all the way through there. So this should be a very musical sub. Um, it's just a very linear response. And in car, we're going to see a bump on the bottom end here uh, to some degree. But we'll check that in car. Do SPL in car. But this will give you an idea of this actually is a truly musical, pretty versatile sub for being in prefab boxes. Make sure you're subscribed for all the future videos on testing in car with the Ghost 10 as well as the Ghost 12. That'll be coming right after that. Uh, this is one of the things that people did request uh, was an RTA uh, in box. So what other suggestions do you have? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 12 testing in the sealed and ported and prefab boxes. On bench, in car, is there anything else you wanna see? Maximum SPL was uh, mentioned, like in SPL boxes. We may do that. Uh, so comment below what you want to see as far as testing in the Ghost 10, Ghost 12. I'll open up pre-order on those probably within the next few weeks. Uh, we're now in the middle of February if you're watching this later. And uh, you can check that out on emfcaraudio.com. And these are very, very budget-minded. 500 watts RMS. They are our new entry level.